this is John Ebat, and I'm here in my Toronto studio, and today I'd like to talk about the Viscount series of organs. I've been uh, an organ player since I was in high school. I started my music retail career working for Hammond Organ Studios. Well, just about the time the B3s were the real tone, those were getting discontinued. Those were the days where the keyboard rig was uh, had the benefit of working for my manager at the store, so we could take all the gear from the store. The days of Hammond B3 and two Leslie 122s, a Fender Rhodes on top of the Rhodes, of course a clavinet, on top of the B3 was a Selena string ensemble, and on top of that was the mini mode. So a lot of weight, about a thousand pounds in that keyboard rig. And even back then I was dreaming, oh, wouldn't it be great to have a Hammond B3 that, oh, you could split the lower manual and you could split the upper manual and you could have four different parts on one keyboard and just to reduce it all into a nice compact system. But still then, that was 400 pounds to lug around. So over the years I've been on my quest you know, I've sold and owned every brand, you know, the Roland VKs, the Nords, the Yamahas, uh, of late, all the VSTI software instruments and iOS instruments. Tried them all, trying to find that combination of the feel of the keys as well as the sound. You know, I want more out of the clone wheel than just a great organ sound. So. Being that traditional person, but also being the MIDI guru, as I'm told, uh, I really wanted to get more uh, out of that. And finally, this picture of what's behind me, the Viscount legend, in this case, the live that I'm using, uh, the dreams come true, but to a much higher level. Instead of just having a split keyboard or a layered keyboard on each upper and lower manual, every key can have its own and it could be 61 splits on each of the keyboards if you want, 61 different sounds, so you know, as many as you need. Uh, and I'll go through uh, the process that I did. You know, the dilemma of all uh, of the previous generations of clone wheels has been, you know, the drawbars always didn't transmit to the software or they didn't transmit to the other MIDI module. But now the MIDI implementation of the Legend series is pretty phenomenal and it does all the things you sort of expect it to do, but also very easily. So you can split the keyboard and have an upright bass of the software sound, and on the right hand side it goes to your hardware MIDI module. You still have all the things the Legend Live can do. You have, you know, four sets of full nine draw bars for upper and lower, and then plus the bass pedals, all the Legend other features, of course. But also those draw bars, you know, I always thought, well, you have nine draw bars, nine sliders that could be volume controls. They all work. They all send proper CCs, and we'll take a look at that. But great sounds. It's basically, I can take the Legend Live, which, you know, you're looking 40, 45 pounds in a kick bag, very portable, throw it on a stand, and one laptop sitting on top of the nice flat platform that's there, and you've got a touring rig. If you want the like the Tower of Power set up, you can throw your Yamaha keyboard on top, and we'll take a look at that rig. Or if you want more expressive sounds out of a you know an MP keyboard, because as keyboard players, both hands are always busy. So having the ability to create vibrato just by wiggling your finger, so being able to just give the same uh, physical motion as your violinist uh, using that control to be expressive when you don't have the left hand available to you know move that mod wheel up. So we'll take a look at all of those functions. So the Legend Live is on uh, the Viscount metal stand, and on top of it is um, the ASM Hydrosynth Explorer and a MacBook Pro uh, that's running Gig Performer. So that allows the USB connections from the keyboards to be assigned anywhere. Also there's a Roland uh, 
FS1 uh, control pedal. So that uh, has three momentary switches uh, to move the patches up and down and a MIDI panic button. And as you can hear, there's sounds that you don't get out of a legend live. So we have upright bass, but with a, a piano using the trillion bass and the keyscape piano on the on the lower manual and upper manual. We've got our Viscount great organ sound, and the hydrosynth has the Swam audio modeling uh, alto sax. That whole rig on one keyboard stand. It screws right into the Legend Live, which gives it great stability, regardless of the keyboard on top. And there's the folds up nicely into a nice compact flat. Here's the Viscount Legend music stand, which it comes with, so you don't have to bring another man hustle or any other heavy music stand which just clips right in. It is metal, so if you use an iPad with the metal cover, it's magnetic. So it'll stick to your, your iPad will actually stick to the stand. So imagine having a mini mode for your left hand bass, an Oberheim OBXA, and a Prophet 5 layered, creating your synth brass sounds. You still got your great Viscount organ tone wheel sounds cooking away there. Virtually any sound becomes available. Hardware or software can be connected through your through your laptop in total assignment. The Viscount is set up to transmit on three different MIDI channels, and all the drawbars are assignable. They all have their own CC numbers. In this case, I've got volume control on the B set of uh, lower drawbars at the far right, and they control up to nine uh, volume controls. Nine different plugins can be assigned in the, the, the MIDI mixer. Being able to control everything with the, moving the slider just as you would controlling your drawbar settings as an organist. In a nice compact rig, it's very light. You bring a stand, your laptop is very portable. It's a great setup. Everything's right in front of you, and any sound becomes possible.